थैंक यू वेरी मच पवन गुप्ता जी phenomenon of growth which is uh, let's say 2 3 centuries old uh, this awareness that this growth took place at the expense of south was missing from that conference there is absolutely no mention that there is a connection between this growth and what the south had to suffer Second, uh, this present-day crisis, because of which this degrowth movement uh, is uh, degrowth movement, like many other movements, is a product of uh, crisis, which uh, is there because of uh, massive ecological and environmental destruction. to uh, to look at this crisis purely in uh, technocratic terms uh, according to pavan gupta is uh, not the right thing to do uh, this is basically civilization crisis so for instance uh, if uh, if the focus of a movement is uh, that we move from one technology to another without actually changing very much other things uh, he doesn't think that that actually can solve the problem it is in this connection that he uh, mentioned uh, gandhi ji is that gandhi ji is in suraj in fact uh, focus precisely on these things civilizational aspect and that this uh, modern idea of growth uh, is intimately connected with uh, exploitation but uh, he also mentioned that in the big growth conference he in fact uh, i mean apart from indians i mean he did not find anyone in fact talking about uh, gandhi ji or gandhi ji in the suraj uh, which in <coughs> which in a way it, uh, it is odd because uh, for instance the environmental and ecological movements have resurrected uh, some of the figures i mean even minor people who did not make much of an impact uh, in the west say dio bold uh, they be resurrected or uh, englishman uh, white uh, gilbert white uh, so now people are talking about i mean these were not very important figures uh, but because there are so few of these people so they have been resurrected so it's in a way it is surprising that uh, in a the growth conference if gandhi was not mentioned and it is indeed uh, in a, something i mean which is uh, uh, quite surprising so, uh, i think the main point that uh, Pavan Gupta made was that if this question of degrowth uh, 
in fact, the, the, the correct way to look at this ecological environmental crisis because of which movements like degrowth have become relevant is uh, to focus on uh, some civilization. Before we start the interactive session, our last speaker uh, is uh, of there are two speakers, but uh, uh, Sri Vijay Pratap would speak at the end. So uh, we have one more speaker before uh, Joya. Uh, I think a uh, lot of what I want to say has already been uh, captured and covered by <coughs> previous speakers, which gives me the advantage of having a very small uh, speaking duration, but that also requires me to be more creative. I'm going to speak more from my perspectives of the conference and uh, what my reflections were when I went to the legal process the interaction that we had with the various sessions. Um, when I heard the term degrowth for the first time, if you began discussing it in the conference at June, um, to my uninformed mind, I did not know that such a term could exist in the vocabulary of uh, modern world because all we ever hear and speak and talk about has been growth in, uh, in various forms and various measures. So the idea of degrowth itself was quite challenging and right. Um, at the same time, in fact, I'd like to share two experiences around that. Um, uh, one was when I spoke to my larger peer group about the fact that we were going through a conference in degrowth. Uh, they had the same reaction uh, when they said that. What, is, what, is, what do you mean by degrowth? When, uh, and when we are, especially when we come from a third world growth oriented sort of marketing, <coughs> uh, the idea of growth really takes predominance over everything else. So we aren't really thinking on parameters of degrowth because we haven't grown enough. Uh, the other experience was when we spoke to a couple of Chinese and Korean students at the Leipzig University, which is where the conference is happening. And, um, we were in fact speaking to them uh, somewhere in the canteen and uh, we realized that they were, there, was, there was a huge student population there which consisted, uh, consisted of a lot of German and European students from the university and from outside. Um, but uh, those students were not part of that conference and we felt that we could ask them why. And their simple response was that, uh, in simple terms, when we see that growth or degrowth, there is no benefit to talk about it. You have grown up, then you पतले होने की बात करते हैं हम उनको तो अभी भी भूख लगी है। So it was actually these kind of perspective experience that I really went through the degrowth conference with, without any sort of uh, sort of any presuppositions about what is going on. More as a um, more to learn and to understand what the conference is. So <coughs> and when we started, uh, so that built up my curiosity, and then when I tried to read online, uh, saw where. Uh, I was surprised to see that there were already three prior degrowth conferences that had happened, uh, which I was completely uninformed about. Um, but it, I felt that it was again, uh, it had its origins in Spain and Barcelona and uh, Europe, and it was predominantly like a, I felt it was a continental or a European response uh, of a certain section of uh, the population towards their own self appraisal of their consumption patterns, their growth trajectories. And it was out of this sort of Broader realization that the idea of degrowth really germinated, and it was that idea that was still germinating by the time we reached uh, Brazil. Um, I felt that at the conference, the idea of degrowth that was being suggested, and uh, again, came more as a reaction to the fact that there were some collective responses or realizations to the fact that we are consuming too much or we are growing at a rate that disadvantages or is at the cost of somebody else. Uh, whereas our idea of, or this was versus a more, um, I think if we have to use the word, a more third world perspective that um, that growth that needn't necessarily be economic in the sense that it has to, it has to sort of derive its bearings and this is what I feel, I believe now after the conference, it has to derive its bearings, it has to learn from uh, the natural organic growth of uh, Humanity or human consum consumption patterns. What is what naturally comes to mind? Like once you spoke about the idea of surplus, I think that is an unnatural phenomenon that has been sort of imposed upon us. Um, also, 
a large part of the aspect that I felt was that we shared commonly at the growth conference was uh, the agreement over the fact that uh, a lot of public consultations or there is a private ownership over public consultations, whether it's the north and the south. I feel it is more inclusive definitely in the north, but again, those spaces are quite controlled in the space that uh, any consultation or advocacy that is offered. And the whole idea that, you know, um, whatever is being done is being done with the sort of implicit consent of everybody, of all mankind. That was a great realization that came from, and to, to, to have that mirrored with our European friends was, uh, was interesting. Um, but at the same time, I felt that the degrowth conference was, in some ways, um, at least for me, I felt, and uh, maybe this comes from uh, prior, uh, I think, sort of predisposition being at the WSF maybe earlier, but I felt it was a curated audience in that sense, because uh, a lot of the people there were from within the continent, were young people, were students. Um, maybe that was also because we didn't have, we didn't have as deep interaction with those such a large space, and there were so many discussions happening at the same time. But, um, for example, I did not see any any participation in significant numbers from either the BRICS countries, uh, the predominant sort of, the next uh, big markets in the world, or from Latin America, Africa, or Asia, which really are, and that kind of also made me think about the classical North-South conundrum of, you know, um, sort of ecological brickmanship where they say that you reduce your consumption and therefore we will we will overall sort of try and um, try and reduce ours, and it is that back and forth that I think was kind of um, the lacked here as well. Um, I also felt that uh, the limitation as well as the achievement at the same time of the growth, the degrowth conference was the space that it offered. Um, I agree with Ashish the fact that you know there was a diversity of discussion and participation from across disciplines, but like I said again, there was lack of participation from from the kind of economies that would definitely have to be part of the discussion or the discourse on the growth. Um, I feel the conference or, or the degrowth conference has to move in a direction that needs to involve a more diverse discussion from definitely south. Within the north as well, it has to be a less curated audience in that sense. Um, we have to rely on mechanism of collective self-learning from across communities and at various levels. Um, but yet, we have to have consistent but customized strategies towards the idea of degrowth. The, I felt also at the conference, the, just the idea of degrowth by itself is very evolving. I don't think everybody, anybody has a clear idea of, or has one assumption on degrowth, which is a good thing, I feel. And it is that sort of collective self-learning that we need to take to the next level. Which is why I, I, I feel that the whole idea of um, thinking of degrowth as a part of the larger framework of um, the WSL process or the idea of another world is possible um, appeals to me much more than just trying to deliberate on issues of degrowth. Um, I'd like to say that in the end, I think another aspect that the whole degrowth debate needs to be informed from is um, our perspectives on our traditional value systems and our traditional learning. There have to be, I mean, for us, uh, growth is not a bad word. Uh, it just has to be understood in a non-economic sense. Our, our culture, our heritages tell us about growth, which is organic, which is uh, human, it is personal, it is spiritual, and non-economic. So we could call this gross national happiness or Vir or Swaraj. But the idea is that they all speak of the same, the same thing, which is the growth of humankind as opposed to the growth of markets in the world. 